And welcome back to another episode of Winning Wednesdays. Ooh, today's a good one. Today is my favorite topic. And it's really funny recording this episode today. I got I got tagged in a Facebook post this morning. And I was on a podcast with my buddy Jeremy Ryan Slate the other day. Somebody I absolutely love has been in this game for so long in the podcasting game and in the world of just helping people and adding value. And he got an email. So he was his team was reaching out to go on other people's podcasts. And he got an email back from somebody who they pitched out. And this somebody wrote him an email and said, okay, now I get it. Your supposed loser owner, Jeremy, is a chronic spammer making all kinds of bullshit claims. And then somehow my name came up. George Bryant has never created a $100 business, let alone a million dollar business. Oh, how I love you group of ass clowns. I just had to laugh a little bit this morning. Um, Oh, I just love people and how this works. And that came via email, which brings us to the topic of today, which is email marketing. And so I've just laughed and said my entire mission today, just my entire mission is to build a hundred dollar business. And I'm just giggling and and it hurts my heart a little bit. Um, I don't know this person. I've never met this person. I've never heard this person's name, but apparently they've heard mine. And so I feel like I've made it today. And so I think we should talk about email marketing now. And uh, I think everybody should be a little nicer and everybody should have conversations with people and uh, give some people some common decency because that email, by the way, that email goes on to say, if you email me again, I will personally fly out and punch Jeremy straight in his loser clown face. So pass that along, you bunch of criminal network marketing idiots. Oh. What a cup of sunshine that one is. But you know what? Today's cup of sunshine is about email. And so here's one thing. Don't ever send an email like that. Don't ever send an email like that. Those emails don't work. And when you get a really nice email, don't respond like that either. It's just not going to do you any good. But let's get to today's topic. And my favorite question, is email marketing dead? No. When somebody asks me, is email marketing dead or says my email doesn't work or my email marketing won't work or people don't read my emails or my emails can't work. What I tell them is that nobody has an email problem. Everybody has a relationship problem. It's not email marketing that's broken. It's the context of the relationship that's broken. Email marketing is not dead. In fact, it is quite opposite. Email marketing is mandatory. It is the backbone of the customer journey. Email is like having a direct invitation to somebody's kitchen, right? Like when you're on social, when you're on Facebook, when you're on Instagram, when you're on all these other platforms, your relationship with somebody is predicated on them seeking you out or an algorithm placing you in front of them. Email is is your direct connection directly into their home. It's like putting a letter in their mailbox. But when you think about it like that, when you go to your mailbox and you open it and you see that same old junk and those same old flyers, what do you do? You don't read them. You throw them in the trash. Well, when you go to your mailbox and you go open it, what do you go look for? Something new, something valuable, something that excites you, something that helps you? Because if you look at your consumption of direct mail, it's very similar to your consumption of email. And email marketing is not dead. It just needs to be resuscitated with love, with value, with connection. And you have to know how to do email based on you, your customer, and the value that you provide, right? And so there's some of you who are going to be able to email your customers every day. And there's some of you that are only going to be able to email your customers once a week. There's some of you that are going to require personal emails to build trust, to build longevity, to build a long-term relationship. And then there's going to be some of you where people just want you to email them daily of nuggets of content and some of them that just want to be sold every day. Like if you run a business and you have daily sales or daily deals or a website like Touch of Modern or Uncrate where you're always featuring products, people want to be emailed every day and they want to be emailed the new deals. 
If you have a health company and you help people lose lose weight or get better and you have supplements, they're going to want to know what new supplements you have and what you have. And in between those, they're going to want to know how to better use them, how to feel better, how to eat better, how to sleep better, how to move better. And so your most important part is understanding how to use email based on you and your audience. And so I'm going to close this, is email marketing dead? No, email marketing is the opposite of dead. It is very much alive and it is required for you to be successful. I have had trouble thinking about any company or any business that cannot benefit from email marketing, any of them. And someone, I, I, I said this once at an event and someone's like, okay, cool. Well, how would you do email marketing for batteries? And I was like, oh, here we go. And I literally was stumped for about 10 seconds. Then my brain started thinking about batteries first off like how to use them how to properly store them the history of them and then i was like well if i ran out of content there i could talk about the environmental impact and how to use them better while funding a nonprofit that like literally looks for renewable energy or something along those lines like there are so many options and what you need to think about is what do my customers want? Not just my product or my service, but what else do they want? What do they want to learn about? What do they want to know? What's going to help them in all the other modalities of their life? And then what is it that I have to share? Do I have information to share? Do I have accountability to share? Do I have research to share? And when you think about all of those and combine it together, you get the relationship map for how email should be done. And so when people say this to me, like your email marketing's dead or my email doesn't work, I said, no, your lack of a strategy or your shitty strategy is the reason why people aren't buying from you, consuming your emails or reading one and disappearing forever. And so when you think about it, an email is not designed overnight. You have to know your customer's journey, where they are now, where they're going to be a week from now, a month from now, and a year from now. And you have to think about that, which means you have to think about who you are, what you have to offer, how you're going to offer it, what's the best way to offer it, how can I deliver it in bite-sized nuggets to help them on a journey. And so when you think about email, your email marketing is supposed to be a touch point in a relationship with your subscribers. Let me say that again. Your email marketing is supposed to be a touch point in a relationship with your subscribers, not a transaction machine. And so we think about customer journeys. We talk about how customer journeys take a long time, somewhere between five and 150 touch points, depending on your product, your service, um, where they're coming from, the level of commitment, how much money it costs, right? But yet a lot of people treat email like it's a one-off thing. If you treat your email like it is a one-night stand, I guarantee you it will not work. And go look at the best email marketers in the world. Go look at the best direct response copywriters in the world. Go look at the companies that are absolutely crushing with email. Do they not talk to you for three weeks, then email you once, then disappear again? No. Do they talk to you infrequently? No. Do they talk to you inconsistently? No. Do they talk to you incongruently? No. Look at your email behavior from a consumer. Look at what you read, why you read it, why you look forward to it. Do you notice when it's not there? When you do read it, what makes you click? And was it that email that made you click or was it the pre-existing relationship before that email that built the trust? When you see their name in their inbox, in your inbox, how does it make you feel? When you see the subject line, does it make you want to open the email? When you see the email, does it make you want to go to their social? I want you to just audit how you feel when you read your email. I want you to look at yourself when you go through your inbox. What did you delete? Why did you delete it? What did you keep? Why did you keep it? When you kept it, how did it make you feel? Were you excited about the next one? You need to think about these things because these are the things that your customers are thinking about or your subscribers are thinking about that's going to make a big difference with how you do email marketing. Successful email marketing is 95% thinking and planning and 5% execution. 95% thinking and planning and 5% execution, okay? So I'm gonna give you the seven biggest mistakes that people make when it comes to email marketing. But before I do that, I want to share with you how I think 
about email marketing, right? And I always use health as an example because it's a really easy concept for us to wrap our head around, right? So I always use the same example. If I was a personal trainer or nutrition coach or whatever, a weight loss coach, and I had a customer come to me and said, I want to lose 100 pounds in the next 12 months. This is the example I always use for myself. I want to lose 100 pounds in the next 12 months. Well, we know we have 365 days to accomplish that goal. And we know that in order for that goal to be achieved, it's going to come down to a few things. One of them being movement, one of them being nutrition, and one of them being like habits or sleep, right? So we'll just call it lifestyle, right? So movement, nutrition, and lifestyle, right? And so technically, when that person comes to me, let's call him Sam. Sam comes to me and Sam says, George, I want to lose 100 pounds in the next 12 months. I have two options. Option one, all right, Sam, here's all your meal plans. Here's your workouts. Here's your lifestyle regimen. Here's your sleep schedule. Here's your supplements. Here's where you're going to go to the gym. Here's how you're going to do it. Go every day for 12 months and I'll see you in 365 days. Do you think Sam's going to succeed? Probably not. Sam's going to quit going to be overwhelmed, not going to make it. There's no momentum. The odds are stacked against him, right? Just not in his favor. Or the other option, Sam comes to me. All right, Sam, listen, I am super stoked. I want you to meet me at 7.15 tomorrow morning. And all I want you to do tonight is make sure you drink 16 ounces of water before bed. I'll see you at 7.15. Then 7.15 comes. And Sam's like, what are we going to do? I'm like, we're just going to go for a 10-minute walk today. And then he's like, then what? I'm like, oh, and then I just want you to have this protein shake. Do everything else as normal. And then the next day, I add some more. And the next day, I add some more. And I sit there and I hold his hand every single day while creating momentum and building habits and building trust and building confidence. And then every single day, we build upon that habit, moving forward, moving forward, moving forward. Which one do you think is going to succeed? Obviously, option two. That's how I think about email. So when somebody comes to me and they're like, George, I want to know how to do email marketing. I'm like, okay, cool. Well, where are you? And they're like, well, I'm kind of emailing my customers, um, but not consistently and I don't know what to talk about. So my brain goes to, okay, if I was going to design an email journey for them, what would it look like? Well, the first thing is, is I need to know where they are. So they need to identify where they are. Then they need to identify what's missing. Then they need to understand the entire ecosystem and then they need to start building. And so I might be able to teach it in a 20 minute video, but if I was breaking it up via email, I would probably break it up between seven and 10 emails and give them something to do every day for two minutes or four minutes to put it into momentum and build upon it so that the change maintains forever. And it's not a knee jerk. It's not a reaction, right? So that's how I think about customer journeys. So you have a lead magnet. You're like, I'm going to share with you uh, how to lose 10 pounds in seven days. Well, you probably should have at least 10 emails. Email one is congrats. Email two is prep. Email three through nine or 10 is the actual content. Email 11 is the wrap and the next steps, right? Or, hey, I have this five-step process. Yeah, it should probably be like seven to 10 emails. Email one, congrats. This is what you're signing up for. Hey, email two tomorrow, we're going to go over the entire process. Email three, okay, this is the big overview of the process. Email four is the parts of the process. Email five, right? You have to break it down step by step by step, which builds trust, it builds consistency, it creates habits, and it actually ensures that the people who are consuming your content or subscribing to you because you promised them something in exchange for their email, or you promised them an after state in exchange for their trust and their email, that you are doing everything in your power to get there, okay? So now let's get into the seven mistakes that people make with email marketing. Number one, do not send unsolicited messages. You must have explicit consent. If somebody opts in for a giveaway, you can't take them from that giveaway and add them to a list to sell them something. People must opt in specifically for your list for a specific reason, and the emails that follow must be relevant to what they signed up for. I'm going to say that again. You need to respect people's consent and the containers in which they join you. So if somebody comes in for a giveaway and you get an email for a giveaway, And then you decide they didn't win the giveaway, but you're going to automatically start sending them sales emails every day. Not only is it unethical, but it's illegal if you look into GDPR and the CAN-SPAM Act, okay? Plus, 
why would you want people on your email list that were tricked or forced to be there and then wonder why they don't convert or they complain or they report you as spam and the rest of your emails go down? So instead, do this. You sign up a 1,000 people for a giveaway and let's say five win. At the end of the giveaway, design a three-part sequence that tells them why they were there, right? Email one, like, hey, sorry you didn't win. As the thank you, I just wanted to give you this and I wanted to welcome you into our world. And then the next day, let them know what your commitment is to them and what you have to offer and let them know that if they would like to get emails for you on topic X to click that link trigger, which would then move them over. And then email three is like, hey, I noticed you didn't click the link trigger. Maybe you're not interested in my daily emails, but would you love to stay on our list just to get our weekly newsletters? If so, click this link below. And if they do, then they can send there. And if they don't, remove them from your list. They don't want to be there. No matter how many times you shove your content or your agenda down their throat, they're not going to say yes. But every time that you do and they say no and they don't open it and they report you as spam and they unsubscribe, your sender score goes down. Everybody else on your list doesn't see your emails. Your reputation goes down, which is permanent, and it's very hard to recover. And then you wonder why your email doesn't work, but it was all predicated on how you treated it in the first place. So mistake number one, do not send unsolicited messages, okay? Mistake number two, do not send an email without testing it. What does that email look like on desktop versus mobile? Have you checked every link? Do all the images load? Is the subject line filled out? How does it look on different platforms? There's a website called Glock Apps that you can use plus a thousand other ones. You send your test emails there. It tells you, did it hit spam? Did it go to the inbox? On what platform and why? It will tell you because your subject line contained this or it contained this or you had 17 links in your email and you should only have one. But you should never send a untested email. You would be shocked at the amount of times I get emails from companies that are mailing a million people that didn't test their emails, that had a broken link, that uh, had an image that didn't match, had a subject line that didn't match. You need to make sure that you are testing it. And the way that I think about this is I always tell myself, I have one chance. I have one shot, right? It's like, if you, were, if you had one sentence to convince your significant other to marry you, you would practice that sentence over and over and over and make sure you nailed it. You had one audition that would give you the chance to change your life. That's how I look at every single email. Now, of course, mistakes are going to happen. But if you live in this state of, did we check it? Is it ideal? Is it good? Did we hit this wicket? What I do is I have a checklist, right? So I send a daily email. And if you have not signed up for our daily emails yet, I highly recommend that you do. Um, You probably haven't signed up because I didn't tell anybody about it yet. Uh, But I've been sending a daily newsletter for free to help some people out. But if you you do want to go there, Uh, here's what you can do. I made it really, really easy. Just write this down and remember this. It's lightkeeper.club. So if you want to sign up for my daily newsletter and the emails that I've been sending, go to lightkeeper, L-I-G-H-T-K-E-E-P-E-R.club, C-L-U-B, lightkeeper.club. So for me, I know what I want in every subject line. I put a flashlight, an LL, and then the subject line. I know I want a quote at the top of the email. I know I want my content. I feature a podcast at the bottom, and then I have all of that. So once I write that email, I have a checklist that I actually go check, and I go check it. I'm like, okay, is it there? 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 I save it. And then I'm like, test it. And then I'll send a test email to my test email. I'm like, does it look good? Did it load on mobile? Did it load? Yep. And it takes me less than 30 seconds, but it guarantees that at worst, people read it and do nothing. And at best, they read it and move forward. But if I don't test it, I can burn bridges. I can lose trust. I can burn relationships because of my lack of attention to detail. And how Can I convince somebody or get somebody to trust me with their credit card or with their bank account when I can't take the time to deliver an email that is on point and quality, that is a representation representation of my brand and what I stand for? I can't. And so you have to remember that it's all the little things that add up to the big things. And so think about that. So don't send an email without testing it. So mistake number one, don't send unsolicited messages. Mistake number two, don't send an email without testing it. 
Mistake number three, do not ignore the two most important lines of the email, which is the subject line and the sender name. The only reason why emails get opened is because of the relationship with the sender and the subject of the email. A lot of people like, they didn't open my email, let me change the content. They didn't open my email, let me change the content. They can't see the content. That's not why they're not opening the email. There's only one of two reasons why they're not opening the email. Number one, they saw your name and they were like, ugh, I'm not opening another one of those emails. Or I don't know who this is. Or every time I open an email, it's like this. Or two, the subject line didn't get them. Maybe they felt tricked or spammed or... Uh, It just didn't match. But you have to remember that the reason people open emails is based on the quality of the relationship with the sender and then the information that's provided to them in that one second that they make a split decision. Do I open it? Is this for me? Do I want to read it? And so if their last email, you had a spammy subject line, they're like, this one secret will change your life. And then they open it and it was bull crap. Well, now the next email is not going to get open because they're like, there was no secret. It was trickery. It wasn't there. And so Litmus did a study on this. The most plain and straightforward subject lines are the ones that get opened the most, especially when they have a positive relationship with the name of the person sending the email. And so have your name there. Put it in there. Use a subject line that creates an open loop, but also tells them what they want and what they're going to get. And then make sure the subject line matches the body of the email so that it is a positive touch point for people moving forward. Okay? Mistake number four, do not make it hard for people to unsubscribe. If they don't want to be on your list, let them go. If they don't want to be there, it does no good to have them there. This whole belief, I need a big email list, I'm afraid for them to unsubscribe. If they don't want to be there, they're not going to pay you. If they don't want to be there, they're not going to share your content. Stop holding people hostage and make it really easy for them to go. This is a game about quality versus quantity, and I'm not going to get into this one or my tangent would be massive. Do not hide unsubscribe links. When somebody unsubscribes, take them off your list. Make it easy for them to go. And you have to remember, email is not divorce. If somebody unsubscribes, it doesn't mean they're never coming back. I unsubscribe from emails all the time and then rejoin them months later. I'm cleaning up my inbox. I don't want to focus on that right now, but... My determinant on if I come resubscribe again is based on the quality of my relationship with the sender. So make it easy for people to unsubscribe. Do not make it hard. Mistake number five, do not try to be a graphic designer. Text-based emails almost always win. You don't need fancy designs, images, and visuals. Your job is to help people achieve their goals, to learn more, to move forward towards their after state. And sometimes images do that. But I watch people spend hours designing a visual newsletter that nobody's going to read or click on anyways. Plus, most of those images aren't displayed by default and people want to read. They want a relationship with people. And so at most, what I do is we use a primarily text-heavy email and then occasionally, occasionally, we'll put images in. When we want recipes or sales or coupons or products and things like that, that's when we will do it. But for the most part, it's text-based to build that relationship, to respect their time, and to give them what they want, which is the information they need to move forward. So mistake number five is do not try to be a graphic designer, okay? Now, mistake number six, ignoring statistics. You need to watch your open and click-through rates. Those numbers will tell you what's working and what's not so you can adjust. Do you need to be anal about it and obsess about it and wonder about boom, boom, boom? No. You just need to make sure that you're present about it so you're like, oh, if you're looking at your email sequences, right? If you're looking through your email sequences and you like have a 10-part email sequence, right? And you have like a 70% open rate, a 75% open rate, a 68% open rate, and then email four has a 22% open rate, you need to look at that because really there's only normally one of two options, three options. One, technical glitch. Two, your subject line was horrible. Or three, the email prior burnt a ton of bridges and people don't want to read anymore, right? And so you have to look at that because you have to just be aware if what I'm sending working 
Is this helping? Is this moving me forward? Because you have to remember that people opening and clicking your emails is predicated on their relationship with you, the subject line, and the sender name, right? And so if you have some dips or things aren't working or you promise everybody that you're going to give them the seven-day guide to blank and email one gets open but then emails two, three, four, five, and six don't work, you need to look at it. The only reason people convince people that 18% open rates are good and 9% open rates are good is because they don't want to do the work to put in the relationship. I believe 100% open rates are good. And just so you know, if you want to see this done, when you sign up for the Lightkeeper lessons, which is www.lightkeeper.club right now, and I've only put in 200 people through this, but there's 200 people through it with uh, 22 emails and there's an average 91% open rate and a 46% click-through rate on the emails that you're going to read. Take them, copy them, use them. But the only reason people say 100% open rates aren't possible or 80% open rates are because they're lazy and they want to transact with people. But when you take the time to transform people's lives and give them the value, they can escalate up and they create habits. They want to read it and you build an actual relationship. So do not ignore the statistics, but don't make statistics your everything. Buying cycles can take a long time. You know, Litmus did the same study and they said that 30% of people that see your name in their inbox don't open your email, but go consume your content somewhere else based on their relationship with you. So an example I would give you would be Amazon, right? You might be shopping on Amazon, add something to your cart. And then forget it's there. So a day later, you go into your inbox, you see an Amazon email, you don't open it, but you're like, oh, there was in my cart. Let me go finish my purchase. That happens 30% of the time. And so open rates aren't everything. Click-through rates aren't everything, but you just need to have them be on your spectrum of awareness so that you can make the best decision. And then as long as you're focused on that relationship with your customer and then the relationship they have with your sender name, and the subject line, they'll get to the content of the email. And if you're helping people accomplish what they promised or what you promised, they will get there. Okay. And then mistake number seven, the final mistake, not emailing your customers. Email is the backbone that business is built on, and it's a direct relationship in your client's home. It's like knocking on their front door, and if you are not emailing your list, you will not have a business. Nothing like convincing your significant other to marry you, going to the wedding, getting married, and then when you walk out, ghosting them on the honeymoon and never coming back. Do you think your marriage is going to work? No. You have to earn the right to stay in it. Marriages don't work just because you get married. They work because once you get married, you put in the work every single day to make it work. Relationships are all the same and email is a direct relationship. And so whatever it is that you do, make sure that you're there. If you tell your customers you're going to do something, do it. If you tell them you're going to email them daily, you have to email them daily. If at worst, and I mean at worst thing you're going to do, if you don't plan on emailing them, Once they sign up, you need to tell them, hey, I just plan on keeping your email address, but I'm not going to email you at all. And that way there's an expectation, but we don't like open loops. Human beings do not like things that are unresolved. That is called the Zygarnik effect. And so you need to make sure that whatever the expectation is, is laid out clearly by you so that they know what type of relationship that they are in. Okay. And so this is a winning Wednesday. So I have to cut this episode because I could go on for 30 hours about this. But if you want me to do another episode on email, let us know because I will. But let me go over these seven mistakes one more time before we wrap today's episode. Mistake number one, do not send unsolicited messages. Mistake number two, don't send an email without testing it. Mistake number three, don't ignore the two most important lines of the email. Mistake number four, Don't make it hard for people to unsubscribe. Mistake number five, do not try to be a graphic designer. Mistake number six, don't ignore statistics. And mistake number seven, do not ignore your customers. And so those are my thoughts on email marketing. I'm going to say this again. If you want to see how I do email, and this is up to you, how I do email, you need to go to lightkeeper.club. That is my daily VIP newsletter. And let me just tell you now, it is participation required, which means if you don't open and click, you don't get any more of the emails because I can track that. 
but I want to help you achieve your goals, which means that what I share has to be put into practice. But you can see the emails, exactly what I'm doing, how I'm writing them and applying the principles I've been using for 10 plus years. So let's not be like the guy at the beginning of this episode and respond to a good email with a nasty one, but let's also not not send emails to our customers so that we can be in that relationship, earn their trust and help them accomplish their goals. So that's what I have today. Remember that relationships always beat algorithms and I'm sure I'm going to record an outro for this one. So until the next episode, I already said that. How do I wrap that one? Relationships always beat algorithms. So until the next episode, just remember that relationships always beat algorithms. But I love you guys all. I will see you in the next episode. Have a beautiful day. Talk to you soon. I'm out.